In March of 2009, I was hired by a California-based company to travel to the Parrotsville, Tennessee home of renowned and notorious moonshiner Marvin Popcorn Sutton. The ATF had arrested Popcorn after a raid on his property that yielded some 850 gallons of moonshine. He was convicted on federal charges in late 2008, and he was scheduled to start serving his sentence in federal prison the Friday after our portrait session. He never reported to prison. On March 16, 2009, the day after our session, Popcorn Sutton took his own life. To say I was shocked at the news would be an understatement. It took me several days just to process the information. These images are among the very last images of moonshining legend Marvin Popcorn Sutton, who died March 16, 2009. May he rest in peace. Popcorn Sutton was best known for his appearances in documentaries on the History Channel and his book, Me and My Liquor. You may have seen him recently on the series Moonshiners on the Discovery Channel. But the people of East Tennessee and Western North Carolina knew him for his moonshine. For many years, it was considered the best shine you could buy and you were lucky if you get your hands on some. The California-based company that hired me was in the process of brewing popcorn shine legally, and they needed marketing images of the master before he reported to prison. When I arrived at the property, I was invited in by Popcorn's wife. Popcorn looked frail and weak. He was lying on a sofa wrapped in a blanket. I was told that he'd been ill, which in the South usually means that you're dying of something, or could die of something, or you just have a cold. It wasn't clear, but Popcorn didn't look well. He sat up slowly, got his feet on the floor, and screamed something almost unintelligible. It was loud, it was crass, and it was a question. And I'm not going to repeat it here, but suffice to say, it was something about what I like to eat. I was born and raised in the South. I knew this was a test. A test to see how I'd react to his crassness and the question. Without skipping a beat, I replied, Damn right I do. Well, good, Popcorn said. Because if you didn't, I'd say you was a no-good son of a bitch. From there, we hit it off fine, and Popcorn gave me two and a half hours of the last full day of his life. He showed me around his property, old run-down cars, shacks, outhouses, and tools of every shape, form, and fashion. He tried to sell me everything and anything I laid eyes on, and all the while I continued to capture image after image of this old man in his world. Popcorn was quick to ask what I thought was poked through the front of his signature hat. I thought it was a bone of some kind, but Popcorn laughed and said, No, it's a dried raccoon pecker. At first glance, it looked like a cheap digital watch, but it wasn't. It was the electronic monitor the feds used to keep Popcorn under house arrest. While Popcorn waited to go to federal prison, he was under house arrest and he was only allowed to leave his property once a week on Mondays to visit his doctor. Our session was on a Sunday, March 15th. On Monday, March 16th, Popcorn got into his car as he would any other Monday, as if he was going to the doctor's office. Instead of the doctor's office, he drove to a remote part of his property, and as I was told, he ran a garden hose from the exhaust to the window of his car. He was found dead in his car late that afternoon. Since I first published these images, I've been asked many times if Popcorn seemed resigned or morose. I don't know if he was resigned or even morose, but he didn't seem tired, almost exhausted, and often his bright blue eyes were lost somewhere in the distance. I assume they were focused on the task that he knew lay ahead. Popcorn Sutton was a man who did things his way, including ending his own life. I'm just grateful that he chose to give me two and a half hours at the end. Rest in peace, Popcorn.